Um, and uh, the commissioner of the SEC, Greg Sankey, joins us uh, today. It's good to see you. Good to be seen. Good to see people in person. And, uh, you know, talk about football like like normal. We want this to be a normal year, and it has felt like everything is trending in that direction, but we have not gotten completely away from uh, virus talk, virus 2.0, I guess, with uh, what's going on. How closely are you watching developments and wondering if – things that we thought were in the past or maybe not as in the past as we'd like them to be? Well, I, I have a couple of coronavirus trackers that hit my phone first thing in the morning. And I, I actually, when we were adding fans to baseball stadiums, uh, Lafayette and Octavia County are two of those places I check in yeah. addition to here just to see hey, as we had more people at baseball games did the infection rate go up, which it did not. But we're now in a situation where around us the infection rate is going up, and that, that's a problem. And, you know, fans can go to games, it seems, and not encounter the issues of COVID spread, but our teams have to operate within this environment, and so we're very mindful of that reality, and we need our, our teams to be mindful of that reality as well. The SEC as a league, you as an individual, are encouraging student athletes, coaches, administrators, et cetera, to be vaccinated as maybe kind of the, I don't know, first line of defense is the way to describe it, but as an important piece of this process. And yet not all 18 to 21-year-olds for various reasons seem to be comfortable with that. There was one of the student athletes that was here yesterday said had not been vaccinated and had no plans to do so. How do you balance the you've got the right to do that with you believe it's in the best interest for teams in the league as a whole for as many people to be vaccinated as can be convinced. One, one of the realities we have is we have state policy, state executive order, state law in some of our states that prohibit the requirement word from being used. Sure. And if we're governing everyone, that's an issue because we can't govern consistently. You know, we, we'll talk about name, image, and likeness, I'm sure, and you'll hear me say we follow state laws. But I can't just say we're going to follow those state laws but not those state laws. So that puts us in the ability or the reality of saying it's highly recommended and here's the information and here's how we're going to handle disruption that could come because we have to acknowledge disruption can come from teams having the spread of COVID within their environment. Which then brings us back to, I, I heard a, the same interview, probably from the same student athlete. Uh, we do have personal choice, but those choices have implications both ways. And, you know, Richard, I, I'm not trying to, to oversell this, but I just read an article on AL.com from a doctor talking about the patients with COVID she's treating. Yeah. Uh, there's one vaccinated patient who's got some oxygen and will be out, but talking about death in 20 and 30 year olds. So this is real. I, I had a, a friend from my 20s that I just found out two weeks ago passed away. And his wife I've known since I was a teenager. So she's a widow from this. This is not some made-up circumstance. This is a reality we have to be attentive to. All right. So I, I think about as a parent, you want to you teach your children to do what you think is right, but you want them to make their own decisions. And so you weigh the – kind of the old analogy of a carrot versus a stick. I mean, incentive versus punishment. How do you balance, given all that you've said, incentivizing SEC student athletes versus creating some sort of, I'm hesitant to use the word punishment, but disincentive for them not doing it? I'm not sure if I said that we, right. We, we have a medical advisory task force that guided us through last year, and, and I think they thought they'd be done with their work, and unfortunately we're not. And they've said, hey, vaccinated individuals can avoid the level of, of testing that others would have to experience unless they're symptomatic. Uh, we have hoped to remove masking and a lot of the hygiene protocols from vaccinated individuals. But if a team's threshold is, is low, 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 then we have to rethink that. And we have. Uh, and for some teams, weeks, it is still, right? Yeah, relatively speaking. You know, I think everybody's over, over half their roster, uh, and most are trending towards the upper end. So that's the good news, but we need uh, others to pick up steam. And I spoke with an athletic director a couple weeks ago, intensive educational session, just trying to get focused on preparation for the season. I think had four dozen of their, their roster. 
um, go through vaccination. So there's still the opportunity, but we have to communicate the message now. And you know, the reality is, is, as a player, you finish the season playing a bowl game, you go into off-season workouts, you go through spring practice, you go through summer workouts, you go through preseason practice. You do all that work. And we know from last year, if you have COVID, that's two or three weeks that you're not going to be involved. Protect that work. Yeah. Finish the drill, if you will. Access the vaccine, reduce the likelihood of accessing or spreading COVID, um, and thereby minimizing the chance for disruption. Nothing's perfect. But, you know, I was vaccinated as soon as I could, you know, no real side effects. My, my family, my daughters, had one who had kind of chills for a day and life goes on. Uh, but we're, we're combating the most significant public health crisis of my 56, almost 57 years. And we have to acknowledge that reality and adapt. That's a lot of deep talk. You know me. I'm not the deepest guy. <laughs> so let's talk some football for a second, if you don't mind. Uh, what is Greg Sankey, the football fan? get excited about with the start of the college football season i truly enjoy being at the early games which i know our fans won't like to hear <laughs> and on the sideline for kickoff because nothing's gone wrong that day and you have this moment if you're me to just enjoy the atmosphere uh the smell of the field if it's a grass field literally i can smell that now yeah. uh and the play the competition because that's what we're here to support I don't, don't care who wins or loses. But that moment for me is really enjoyable, to be quite honest with you. And, you know, I might be at a CBS game or something else. So those those are fun, too. But I, I really enjoy that that morning moment at kickoff where I can kind of get down on the field and be a little bit by myself and, and just enjoy the game. Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the SEC, is our guest. Sports Talk Mississippi streaming at supertalk.fm. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I, I feel like you've always been really careful about what you say and how you say it. You, you seem to be somebody that understands the importance and the gravity of words. And I feel like in some recent stories and some things that I've heard you say, there's been a little bit of a change of tone uh, with how you speak to and about the NCAA and also kind of with regard to – Big picture things as the landscape in college athletics is changing. I feel like you're holding back less. Is that accurate? Yes. Why? So are we talking about Ross Dellinger's article? Is that, that one? No, we're not talking about beer. <laughs> no, so, uh, you yeah, know, there's I mean, an yeah, article. I mean, that's part yeah, of I mean, it. There was a Sports Illustrated article that really was compiled from three interviews. The last one. My but but first, even going back to your December letter to the NCAA, that, that was different than yeah, the way you so, had couched things well, in the past. But we'll go back to that. I served on the Committee on Infractions, so I'm part of the problem, you know, you could say. But, you know, I learned. There's some Ole Miss fans that agree. And, well, but I wasn't involved in that case, so people can be as angry as they want. <laughs> but, you know, that predated my commissionership. It extended into, um, and I don't. I'm not involved in that, that sure. circumstance, just like with any of our schools. We have active cases now that I don't, I don't touch, right. whether I was on the committee uh, or not. So nonetheless, focusing on the reality, um, I had decided when I finished my term on the Committee on Infractions, some things needed to be said. And, and I thought about a white paper, whatever that is, and the Division One Council, on which I now serve reluctantly, um, was asking for input. And so I had kept notes and put it on paper and sent it in. I didn't intend for that to be in Sports Illustrated. I think Pat Forty somehow accessed a copy, and boom, there, there it is. I had one confusing paragraph of rewritten sense, if you read the letter. But I thought it had to be stated, and there was an opportunity to do so in a venue, and I was venue-specific to the council to say, we have to call attention to these issues. I have addressed those issues privately over time. I have addressed those issues in other meetings with bigger groups. And there's a time when you, you, are, you do reach a level where you, know, you have to, you can sit there and just say, well, throw up my hands and walk away or uh, figure out a different strategy. And uh, so that produced that, that letter, that, that type of thinking. And then, um, you know, with, with the recent article, there's probably two or three interviews where you know, I, I was just disappointed, highly disappointed with women's basketball situation in San Antonio. I did not attend, att intend to attend first and second round men's or women's games. Just going to watch, 
hadn't traveled to to a lot of games and yeah. some bowl games. Uh, but as soon as I figured out the problems, I wanted to go see for myself. And, and I was highly concerned. In fact, there's a lot of things that I looked at that weren't done that I'm like, wow, that weren't even the focus of, of the articles back then. And that was frustrating. And so I've said that. And as we were walking through this lead up to name, image, and likeness, it's a tough spot for the NCA. You know, we're used to um, regulation, call the NCA staff, get an interp, and, and go forward. But we have a Supreme Court case that was pending at the time. We had state laws where the NCA rules weren't going to extend all the way to state laws. And so the NCA adopts a rule and the state laws say you can do more. You have a conflict. And if you're a university in those states, what do you do? You we press pause state just law? for a yeah. second. Sports Talk Mississippi streaming at supertalk.fm. We're going to continue right after this with the Commissioner of the SEC, Greg Sankey. Listening with the Commissioner of the SEC, Greg Sankey, you were talking about specifically before we went to the break, NCAA tournament on yeah, the women's we were, side and some of the things we were that, on the that you had piece about right. you know the need to adjust. So a lot of good people doing work on name, image, and likeness issues develop the legislative package. But you know, I, I felt strongly, and, and I think others with me, that it needed to change because we saw state laws, litigation, Supreme Court case, and probably part of the frustration you saw is the inability to have been persuasive. <laughs> And in, in, in the yeah. moment, and in, in probably early June, and then certainly things changed quickly after the the Alston decision from the Supreme Court. Was the most fascinating part of that not so much the unanimous ruling in favor of the Alston side of the case, but the concurring opinion that basically said we were ruling narrowly today, but if you bring more to us. You can expect the same results. And I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, no, but I, I read uh, the opinion over like five hours with a highlighter and a pen, and I thought the opinion spoke for itself, which is like the trite thing to say. I, I, there was a lot of content in there that uh, to me was a wake up call. Now, the concurring opinion uh, I, I, I was much more strident, but it didn't seem in conflict with. Uh, the, the opinion that Justice Gorsuch wrote, and that, that has to be a wake-up call for us. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there, there was some messaging in the concurring opinion. Uh, but I, I really I read that, but the, the real consuming was of the opinion itself, which I think had some very clear messages. Final thing for you, your level of confidence that Labor Day weekend, we kick everything off and it looks like it is supposed to look, it feels like it is supposed to feel. I'm highly confident about that. Good. Um, um, you know, Ole Miss will be in Atlanta on Monday night, and Alabama plays on Saturday that weekend in that venue. And uh, things could change in the next six weeks, but at this moment um, I have a high degree of confidence because of what we've seen through college baseball, the College World Series, Major League Baseball, uh, NHL and NBA venues in this country with fans indoors and inside um, in large numbers. So uh, the, the need will be uh, for my focus to, for our teams and programs to operate in a healthy way.